Okay, so now that we have these performers on the field, what are we going to do with them? Well, first of all, let's take a look at how to navigate around InVision. The first thing that you've already seen me do is pan around the 2D canvas area. Now we use panning in several different areas and we try to keep it consistent throughout. So what you have to do is right click with the mouse and then just drag, simple as that. Notice that if you come down here to the timeline, you can do the same thing. Click and you can drag, timeline moves. So a second thing you might want to do is zoom in and out. We've tried to make this as easy as possible. The easiest way to do it is using the mouse scroll wheel. So if you scroll in, it'll get closer. If you scroll out, it'll get further away. Very simple. And the same thing is possible with the timeline. You can scroll out or you can scroll in. So let's move into 3D mode, see what our performance can do. You'll see that we still have the stands in 3D mode. So you can do the same thing. Note that the toggles are independent for each mode. So if you want to keep the, to the scenery in for 3D mode, but leave it out for 2D mode, it'll save those settings for you. So let's remove them for now and check, take a look at our performers. So you can see these are all the different performers that we have created. We have some clarinets, uh, some trumpets, some mellophones. And we can go back here, you can see we have the drums and the color guard in the back. Oh, and the tubas all the way in the back because we added them last. All right, so you can do the same thing. I can pan around the screen with the right mouse button and dragging, and you can zoom in and out using the mouse scroll wheel. You can also zoom in and zoom out in a couple different ways. If you press the control button and zero, you'll zoom in. Control button and nine will zoom you out. Also, control plus and control minus will move you in and out at a little bit slower rates. Um, note that as on most systems, if I'm saying control, that's usually a Windows term. And on Mac, the equivalent key is going to be command. So. Now that we're in 3D mode, we can also do one more thing. If you hold down the Alt button and you right click like you're panning, you can also rotate around. Now note that this isn't available in 2D mode, only in 3D mode. Alright, now that we know how to get around a little bit, we are going to delete all these performers. Very simple how to delete them, all you have to do is press the delete button. Are you sure you want to delete these performers? It is permanent, cannot be undone. Yes, I want to delete them. Okay, all gone. So, we have no performers and we don't want to go through the setup process. We just want to start messing around and creating a new show. How are we going to do that? Well, it's very easy. Come over here to add performer tool. Actually, let's back up a step. Let's go back to the wizard. So, this is the welcome wizard like we were seeing when we started up. Okay, so if we don't want to do any of these options, all we have to do is come down and press cancel. There you go, simple as that. So let's go over here to the add performer tool. Now, what kind of performers do we want? You see that it's the same sort of list that we had when we were in the wizard. So let's add some, hmm, what do I want? Sousaphones are always fun. Let's add 10 sousaphones. Everyone likes a good sousaphone line. There you have it, simple as that. Now notice that we can't choose the uniforms for these performers at the same time that we create them. So we're going to have to add them and uh, change their uniforms another way. Uh, we'll get to that in another video. Just know that it is possible to do that and that you can change the performers uniforms at any time and at any count in the show. Okay, so now that we have these performers, what are we going to do with them? Well, let's put them in the first set. Okay, so we're going to keep this simple for now. So now we're back in 2D mode. I want to zoom in on the performers and you can see there's a couple colored marbles here. Each of them have their own function. Um, let's start with the blue marble as that's the easiest. So you can grab this blue marble um, and it allows you to move the performers. So you just grab it and you can move it around. They follow around with you. Pretty straightforward. Notice that you can do anything in 3D mode that you can do in 2D mode, including moving the performers around, changing their shape. I find that in 3D mode you can get a better sense of the intervals and the real size of the performers against each other, but 2D mode is a little easier to make their shapes line up properly. 
Okay, so we moved the performers with the blue marble. Also note that you can just grab a single performer and if he's part of the selection, the entire selection will move with him. So it's very simple. So you see what I just did there. I had a selection and I clicked off the selection and it deselected everyone. So now if I want to select a single person, I can do that and move them around or I can drag and select and select multiple performers at a time. We'll get into different ways that you can select performers in a bit. All right, so onto the green marble. What does the green marble do? Well, it's a rotation. So you grab the green marble and you can rotate around. If you hold down the alt button, you can lock to 45 degree angles. So what if I don't want to rotate around the center point of the performers? Okay, so if I press the control button, you'll see that the blue marble turns orange. So when it's orange, you can move it around independently of the performers. So let's say I want the rotation to be on an end point. So I move the orange marble, the blue marble to the end point, and now the rotation happens around the end point. Very nice. Mm -hmm. 